the standards that I'm looking for are a minimum of 12 inches of penetration and a maximum of 18 inches through professional ballistic gelatin, through both uh, four layers of denim and through bare gelatin. And finding ammo that does that properly hasn't been that easy, but I found some good performers. And from the 380, the most recent outstanding performer I found was Lehigh's Extreme Penetrator, a unique design that it's, it's basically a solid copper bullet with a flat face and these flutes cut into the nose that help harness the rotational energy of the bullet and spray damage outwards. And it was a really outstanding performer. A lot of people have asked, you know, why don't you test it from the 9mm? Well, because I know it's going to overpenetrate. Lehigh's own uh, marketing says how much it'll penetrate, and they named it Extreme Penetrator for a reason, because it's an extreme penetrator. If you really want to see a 9mm test of it, TN Out Norders 9 just published one. Here you can get it by clicking on the link up here, and you'll see how the 9mm one does. But since doing that test, I've been flooded with requests to test the Polycase ARX Inceptor in both 380 and 9mm. And a lot of the interest has been driven because it seems like this is a similar type of bullet. It's got, when you look in the nose here, it's got similar flutes cut out of it. That's where the similarity kind of ends to me though, because the more I looked into it, I, I see these really aren't quite like the Lehigh at all. Yes, they have these flutes and they're meant to harness the radial energy, but the Lehigh is a solid copper bullet. This isn't copper. It's, it's a very, very lightweight uh, copper polymer blend. Second of all, the Lehigh is a flat face bullet. This has a round face on it. So it's just, it's, it's different and it, it seems like it will perform differently. My question is whether this is a substitute for the Extreme Penetrator or not is kind of irrelevant. My question is what do these actually do? Will this super lightweight, I mean, 56 grains, think about how tiny that is. That's, that's lighter than some 22 LR bullets. This is only 56 grains, almost half the weight, a little over half the weight of the Lehigh, which is uh, 90 grains in 380. And in 9mm, it's only, I think, 74 grains. So it's a very lightweight bullet. Uh, made of a new material. It's a solid material. It's not a frangible. It's uh, not a hollow point. It doesn't expand. What will it do? Hey, the best way I know is to go to the range and test it and find out. Okay, the way it worked out, I took uh, two shots through the denim and two shots through the bear gel. You're looking at the bullets from the bear gel and they're looking pretty good. One of them came in at 11 inches, which does not meet the 12 inch minimum I'm looking for, but the other one did, came in at 12 and a quarter. And what's interesting, look at the initial damage tracks, which I normally don't focus on that much, but it's worthy of looking at. There's some pretty substantial damage all the way through about seven to eight inches. And uh, you know, what happens in the first three or four inches, with, like with most hollow points, it's not that big of a deal. But when you start doing widespread damage around seven or eight inches, that starts to get more impressive. So I'm surprised. These little poly cases from the 380 for such a lightweight bullet, they did pretty well. The denim bullets, they actually went as far or slightly further. We had 12 inches and 12 and a half inches of penetration, which is excellent. The initial damage track looks great. You know, this, this fluted nose that they have is supposed to create damage by spreading the tissue or the flesh or the gel, whatever, out in a, in a radial fashion, throwing it outwards by the, the force of the RPMs, which is fine, but both of the bare bullets and one of the denim bullets look like they turned around completely backwards. Well, if that happens, th that nose isn't working at all. If the bullet's traveling backwards, the blunt base is, is, you know, what's impacting gel. So I think what we're seeing here, we may see some, in the initial track, we may see some of that radial damage. And after that, it appears that it's pretty much down to tumbling, which is not bad. A tumbling bullet is an effective bullet. It crushes a lot more tissue than a bullet that just goes straight forwards. This looks really, really good. Look what they did here. Okay, first of all, the initial damage tracks, they did some damage. They definitely shredded a lot of gel there. We're gonna go into that in more detail here in a minute, but just look at where the bullets ended up. In bare, they went to 14 and 14 and three quarters inches. Through denim, they went a little further, 15 and three quarters and 16. So those penetration figures 
are ideal. Those are perfect. Those are exactly what you want to see a bullet doing. The damage they did in the initial damage tracks looks like good hollow point style damage up to about 10 inches. There's a notable damage track. It doesn't really settle down until about 10 inches or a little thereafter. As to how it did that damage, not necessarily sure because these are not like the Lehigh Extreme Penetrators. They didn't stay nose forward. They didn't continue causing radial dispersion and, and creating a larger damage cavity by spreading the flesh out. It looks like they tumbled early on. They, many of them, if not all of them, ended up facing backwards. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. As long as they do a lot of good damage and they end up deep and doing damage deep, that's what you want. But there is something that concerns me a little bit. I didn't know how this was going to work out. This is a 74 grain bullet, very lightweight for caliber. Uh, usually a 380 is at least 90 grains. Um, this is 74, kind of halfway between a 22 and a 380. And what can happen with 22s? I'll show you a picture here. Sometimes they just don't go where you told them to. Sometimes they veer off course. This happens with lightweight bullets. They don't have to hit anything to change direction. They just veer off course for whatever hydrodynamic reason. And it looks like we had that happen a little bit here too. You can see on this damage track that the bullet was headed straight and then it just curved up a ways and ended up a good couple of inches off of where the shot had been placed. And we know and we, we preach constantly shot placement is king, but it's kind of important. The bullet has to go where you placed it. If it just arbitrarily, because it's lightweight, it, if it arbitrarily just veers off course, that's not a good thing. Unless, you know, your aim wasn't all that good and then the bullet actually veered on course. But I'm going to presume that your your aim was was good and so this kind of thing bothers me a little it wasn't bad it wasn't a lot of variation it just gives me a little bit of concern that said overall this is pretty impressive the recovered polycase arx bullets look perfect i mean they look like uh, they haven't even been fired if you were a reloader with these you could reload these and fire them again there's not much to be seen they don't deform they don't expand nothing changes about them they're a solid constructed bullet they did stay solid even through the denim which is great overall i gotta say the performance was very good it was much better from the nine millimeter but the 380 was also good i'm surprised and impressed with how well they did considering how incredibly light they are the performance in 380, uh, I think the Lehigh is a much better choice if it feeds properly in your gun. Some people, a few people, when it first came out, were reporting feeding errors. But I just, I like the idea of a heavier bullet. I like the idea of the sharper uh, flat face on there. Um, a heavier bullet stays on course better. It has more momentum. The lighter bullet, as you can see in the gel, it, it would kind of veer off course sometimes. So... Then the lighter bullet was going maybe 12 inches. The heavier bullet went up to 19 inches. So if I was going to choose between these two, I was going to say, first of all, I think this is a decent choice. It didn't hit 12 inches in all four bullets, but it did hit 12 inches in, all, in three of the four. And the fourth one was 11 inches. And that's from the little pistol. If you're using it from a bigger pistol, like uh, Glock 42, for example, that has almost a half inch more barrel. I bet you this would have hit 12 inches every time from that. So I think it's a decent choice. I have no problem with it. Other than to say that I just think that if it was me and my choice, I would use the heavier bullet, more momentum. And I like the idea in the Lehigh that it, it kept that large wound channel going further. That, it seemed to me that it did more damage deep than we got with Polycase. Polycase did a lot of damage early on, but then it really settled down and it didn't penetrate quite as far. So I think it's a decent choice. Uh, but I don't know that I would prefer it over my current top choice. However, if it, just in general, in the ammo quest, when I was looking for the best performing rounds, I think this might make it into the winner's circle. It, it, it wouldn't necessarily be my winner. You know, I still might prefer a conventional hollow point for the, the larger weight and the, the bigger diameter, but this would make it up into the winner's circle. This is a good round. And we get to the nine millimeter, Yes, it's very light, and I'm a little worried about that. But the observed damage was fantastic. The penetration was superb. 
they tumble. They appear to be engineered to tumble on purpose. And that was really the big difference between how I saw the Lehigh performance and the Polycase performance. The Lehigh, in what I tested, they seem to fly truer longer. And, and the front face of the bullet would keep cutting into the gel or into the flesh longer. Whereas the Polycase, it seems that it only really does that for the first six inches or so, and then it starts tumbling thereafter. Well, ain't nothing wrong with a bullet that tumbles. A solid FMJ that tumbles, that's going to bring the overall penetration down, and it's going to increase the wound cavity diameter. And that seems to be exactly what we observed here. Uh, you'd be hard-pressed to find a solid bullet in 9mm, in FMJ, flat nose FMJ, and Lehigh Extreme Pender, any of those that don't over-penetrate grossly. These didn't. These penetrated perfectly. So I'm really impressed with these. I, I know their design is to make it lightweight in general. I have a preference for heavier bullets. If you're the type who loves light bullets, light fast bullets, I think this is a fantastic option. And if you're the type who likes bullets that penetrate between 12 and 18 inches, this is also a great option. It really did well. I have nothing negative to say about it. I think it's a good choice. I'm really impressed with what Polycase has done here, and I look forward to trying them in more calibers and seeing how they perform. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked what you saw. If you did, hit the thumbs up button. And if you hit the subscribe button, you'll be notified when the next video is posted.